Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at and installing the Ford Performance half shaft assemblies for all 2015 to 2018 Mustangs. You're going to want to be checking these out if you're building your S550 and you're looking for a set of upgraded half shafts to handle your new horsepower and torque numbers. You're also going to want to check these out if you drag race your car a lot, if you plan on doing a lot of hard launches and a lot of burnouts, and especially if you're running a different tire, like a drag radio, a bias ply, or even a slick. These are sold as a set of two, you don't have to purchase them individually. It costs about $1,700 and the install will be a 3 out of 3 wrenches in the difficulty meter. And of course, we're here today to show you exactly how it's done. For this install, we used a 3 8 drive impact gun, a 3 8 drive ratchet. When it comes to sockets, we used a 32 millimeter, an 18 millimeter, a 15 millimeter, 21 millimeter, 10 millimeter, and an 8 millimeter. We did use an extension, a 15 millimeter open end wrench, a rubber mallet, and a pry bar. All right, guys, to get your install started, you'll pull off your rear wheels, and then you're going to pop off the spindle nut, which is right here. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to take the spindle nut that we just removed and we're going to thread it back onto our half shaft, but you can see that I'm threading it on backwards. What I'm going to do here is then I'm going to take a rubber mallet and I'm just going to knock this a little bit loose. The whole point of this is to get the splines on the half shaft to release from the spindle. So I'm not going to go crazy with this. If you guys don't have the service tool, this is going to be another option. You don't have to hit it too hard. You basically just want to see it bounce and then it'll bounce out of the splines. All right guys, so you saw how quickly that happened. It was just a little bounce that I was looking for. Once again, basically all we're doing here is we're getting the spline to remove from the spindle. The next step is gonna to be to pull our caliper. So I have an 18 millimeter socket here. We're gonna pull the caliper and the bracket and then we'll hang it just so it isn't pulling on the brake line. After that, we're gonna pull off the rotor as well. So I threw a lug nut back on here because our rotor doesn't want to play nice and we're going to have to knock it loose with the mallet. All right, with the rotor knocked loose, we can go ahead and remove our lug nut and we're going to pull the rotor. All right guys, so what I'm doing right now is I'm taking a pull jack and I am supporting the lower control arm from the spring perch. I just want to take the tension off it a little bit. We're going to be unbolting the vertical link next. To remove the vertical link, we'll pull the 18 millimeter bolt at the bottom and the 15 millimeter bolt at the top. Next, we're going to remove our dust shield here. It's just kind of a pain to work around sometimes, and these are three eight millimeter bolts. All right, next we're gonna remove our wheel speed sensor, which is this right here, this is an eight millimeter bolt, and then also our e-brake cable, which will be a 10 millimeter bolt. There are three sets of bolts that are holding the knuckle in place. We're gonna go ahead and remove the top up here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a 15 millimeter open-ended wrench on the bolt side and an 18 millimeter socket that's gonna remove the nut for us. We'll remove this one next. This is an 18 millimeter. It does have a welded nut on the back side, so you don't have to worry about that. Now we're gonna remove this last bolt here. This is a 21 millimeter. 
Keep in mind that this is the last bolt that's holding the knuckle in place, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my right hand, just hold the knuckle up and on the end of the half shaft still while I undo this. All right, now we can remove the entire knuckle off the end of the half shaft. All right, so our next step is actually to remove the half shaft. I have a pry bar here, and what I'm gonna do, and we'll show you up close, is I'm gonna use the pry bar to pop the half shaft out of place. So I'm gonna go up here, a wedge between the ear that's on the diff right here, and the half shaft, which is right here, and I'm gonna use my pry bar and just pop this out. All right, guys, now you can remove your half shaft. We're just gonna thread the needle So with our factory half shaft out of place and before we install the Ford Performance half shaft, I wanted to take a second and just compare these on the table really quick here. So the Ford Performance half shaft is a big upgrade over your factory half shafts and for a lot of reasons. If we take a peek at the CV joints, they are heavy duty CV joints with CNC billet centers. These half shafts can support up to 1500 horsepower, which like I said, is a huge upgrade over your factory half shafts. Looking at the stub ends, you have one piece billet stub ends here. You have a 34 spline inner stub end and a 32 spline outer stub end. These half shafts do have a limited lifetime warranty on them and keep in mind that they are side specific so when you go to install make sure that you have the correct side. Now one more thing that you want to double check before you move on with the install is that there's a retaining clip on the inner stub end of your factory half shaft. You want to make sure that that retaining clip stayed with the half shaft and it's not still in the diff before installing your new half shaft. You also want to take a peek and make sure that Ford Performance included this retaining clip on the new half shaft, and they did, so we're good to go. We're going to go ahead and get this in the car. All right, guys, so we're ready to install our half shaft. What we're going to do is we are going to install this the same way that we uninstalled our factory. We're going to get this in place, and we actually want to feel the snap into place, and that's when you know that this ring is locked in. So we're going to go ahead. Basically, like I said, is you want to feel this clip into place and you'll know that it's in place when you go to pull the half shaft back out and it won't move. Next, we're gonna reinstall the knuckle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide it over the end of the half shaft. All right, so we are gonna start all of these bolts and get them semi-tight, but we're not gonna torque down a spec just yet. You wanna do that when the suspension's under load. So we'll get our wheel speed sensor back into place as well as the e-brake cable bracket. All right, once again, we're just gonna tighten these down and we'll torque them down a spec later. Next, we're gonna reinstall our vertical link. Just make sure you have it in the correct orientation. Now we're gonna get our backing place. After this, we'll get our rotor and then caliper in place as well.
And we can remove the pole jack too. All right guys, so we're gonna get everything tightened down on this side, and then we'll go ahead and start the other side. So before we move over to the other side, we can't forget our spindle nut. All right guys, we are gonna do the exact same thing on this side. We'll remove the spindle nut, remove the caliper, then the rotor, then our wheel speed sensor, followed by our emergency brake cable, and then go from there. All right, now we're threading our spindle nut back on backwards. I have a rag here because these do get hot. You guys saw how long it took me to get that off. It's a little warm. I'm gonna tap it with the mallet just until I see it bounce back a little bit. Okay. Now we'll move on to the caliper. All right, so we are switching back to our 18 millimeter socket here. All right, so once again, we are going to pin our caliper up because we don't want it resting on our brake line. All right, so if your rotor doesn't want to release, you guys can tap on it with a mallet like we're doing. All right, so we're gonna pull this backing plate just to get it out of our way. So we're back to the eight millimeter socket. All right, so we're gonna grab the wheel speed sensor as well as our e-brake cable bracket. So that's a 10 millimeter. All right, now we're gonna remove our vertical link. So we need a 15 millimeter here and an 18 millimeter here. All right guys, once again, we are going to unbolt our knuckle from the three locations that it's bolted in place. So I got a 15 millimeter open end here. I have an 18 millimeter socket on the nut. All right, now we're gonna undo this lower bolt here and we're gonna hold the knuckle because this is the last bolt holding it in place. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing with a pry bar and just pop the axle out of place. All right, now we'll grab this boy and work it out. We are going to slide our half shaft in place. All right, so with our half shaft popped into place, we're gonna get our knuckle back in place. All right, now we'll do the top bolt here. All right, then we'll get the nut on here. All right, now we'll get our toe link back in place. 
And then we'll go ahead and get these bolts a little bit tighter. All right, once again, we're just going to get these a little bit firmer in place. We're not torquing anything down yet. All right, so right now we're getting our e-brake cable bracket and our wheel speed sensor back into place. All right, now we'll get the vertical link back in place. I'll get the top bolted in before I knock in the bottom. You have a flag nut here, so I'm gonna spin the bolt onto the nut. All right, now we've got our backing plate going back into place followed by our rotor, then caliper. And I am just gonna put two lug nuts on here just to hold the rotor in place while I get the caliper back on. All right guys, so last but not least is the spindle nut, which we just tightened down. The only other thing you have to do after this is obviously get your wheels back on the car, and then you wanna torque all of your suspension bolts back down to spec once the suspension has some load on it. All right guys, that's gonna wrap up this review and install. Keep in mind, you can always check these out more online right here at AmericanMuscle.com.